Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bloodhaven Podcast, episode number 76. As always, I am your host, Belfour Wong, and today I'm joined with... Bianca. As you guys can see, we are in a very different uh, location. Environment. Yeah, environment. Uh, we're actually in Louisiana right now. Um, so we thought it'd be cool to shoot a podcast uh, in B's hometown. Ponchatoula. Ponchatoula, uh, the, the, Ponchatoula Louisiana. <laughs> In Tangipahoa Parish. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? What is what is what is that parish? Yeah, instead of counties, it's parish here still. Oh, really? Yeah, man, and, get with the times. And their parish is Tangipahoa. <laughs> Tangipahoa. So, what what cities are in Tangipahoa? I don't know. I think it's um, I think a meet. I could be totally wrong, but it's Ponchatoula, Vitico, Hammond. I. Think Mandeville and Covington. Again, I could be wrong, but I know it's, it's not like of, I a lot of different. It's areas. not like I ever like learned because <laughs> you know Louisiana, <laughs> Louisiana. But yeah, you as want you to guys, join Sophia? Yeah, we're here visiting her family, so uh, if you might actually hear or see uh, her sisters come into frame, uh, or at least hear, hear them in the distance. Uh, but before we start talking about more Louisiana things, uh, I just want to. Update everybody. Um, if you guys did not see the blog post on the website, um, our board game videos are going to be on a hi- hiatus for the next three weeks. Um, we are kind of re-evaluating the quality of the videos um, and going back and reshooting a bunch of stuff. So uh, there won't be a new board game video until mid-July, I believe. Um, but you guys are still going to be getting the podcast and our live streams are still going to be going off, um, every single week. Uh, just the board game up uploads are going to be different, um, going forward. So we'll keep everybody updated with that. Um, but if you guys haven't already, make sure to go check out our already published board games on this website and on YouTube, um, as B continues to die. (laughs) Swallowed the wrong way. Um, But yeah, so uh, keep an eye out. Make sure to go to bloodhaven.com to keep updated with all of our stuff. Um, But yeah, so we are in Louisiana. The uh, what is what is what is the state of Louisiana? Like, what is their tagline? Like, Arizona is the copper state, and California is the sunny state. What is what is Louisiana? I don't know the swampy state. (laughs) (laughs) No, Um, you know what? I'm not gonna lie. I hated it here growing up, so... Oh, the Pelican? The Pelican State. The Pelican State. I was thinking the Magnolia. But Shout I think out that to might Sophia. Mississippi. Right? <laughs> yeah, she, Is Sophia she, over in the corner over there? She went like this. She was flapping her arms. Sophia, do you want to jump on, on, jump on, on the podcast? Yeah, we can talk about our experiences here. <laughs> She's busy. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... So, as uh, Sophia motion to me the pelican state um i don't know i just never liked it here growing up it was always so humid everyone was so white (laughs) (laughs) not to be mean or anything it's just like compared to when we were in new orleans because we lived in metairie in new orleans and there we went to a school it was called alice Burney. Alice Bernie School. Yeah, that, that was our elementary school. It was from K through, um, I think, 12. Oh, so it's like you just went to school. But we, I was only there for two years of oh, okay. school. We moved when I was starting um, second grade because I was there for kindergarten and first grade. But there, there were like a variety of ethnicities and... Because Sophia and I, growing up, we only spoke Spanish. I mean, we knew we knew some English too, like, but we were talking to our teachers in Spanish. Mm-hmm. So they put us in ESOL, which is like a English learning class, but for kids. Yeah, it's specifically for kids who don't natively speak English as their primary language. So yeah. like, they have to help them. Yeah, and like yeah. I said, like Sophia and I knew English too, but we weren't like great at it. Yeah. So they put us in there. Which is weird now because you are an, a it's fluent the English total speaker, now. and now you <laughs> like you, now you don't speak Spanish. Yeah, because then when we moved here to Ponchatoula, it was legit just white kids. It is it is an interesting city. 
<laughs> town? Yeah, and you haven't gotten to explore um, Ponchatoula and Hammond yet. Like, yeah. It's just so, like, you think... <laughs> it looks small town. It is, it is. yeah, I guess. Well, Ponchatoula for sure, very, very small town. Hammond is a lot bigger, mm-hmm. but it's not huge. But it's still small town, I guess you can... You can yeah, no, this bit. is definitely... I mean, like, I know we haven't explored much, but, like, from what you've told me, like, there's not much else to explore. <laughs> yeah, there really isn't. I mean... Like, you guys have the stereotypical, like, downtown area where there's, like, buildings and there's a crossroad. Yeah. Like, it's just... And that's about it. <laughs> the one highway stretch taking you through town. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean... Was... So, other than the humidity, what, what else was it here that you... Okay, other than the humidity and the individuals that you went to school with, uh, what, what's another reason why you didn't enjoy living here? I never... Never liked the southern things about Louisiana, like the country music, the crawfish boils, the Bud Lights. I don't know. (laughs) Hey, (laughs) to be fair, the Bud Lights will be everywhere in America. (laughs) I mean, honestly, if you think a generic small southern town, it it, that is what it is. And I'm not gonna. It's it's cute. It can be cute if you're into that kind of thing. Yeah, if you're into it. But for me, I was never into it. I just, I couldn't get into it. It just didn't feel like me. So did you like, did you enjoy living in New Orleans more than you lived in Ponchatoula? Well, I mean, again, I was only in New Orleans, like, until I was seven. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, um, but once we got older, I mean, we would always make trips out to New Orleans, like, almost every weekend. Because, I mean, it's the only other thing to do rather than travel to Hammond. <laughs> 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 Which there's, like, nothing to do. So, it, but if you had to choose, like... If you had to stay in this general area, would you prefer to have lived in New Orleans? Probably not. Because so now that I'm older and that I moved out of here and now that we're back, I realize because we've traveled because Papa has always taken us to different um, states to travel. Mm -hmm. And when we would go to New York, because we've been there a couple of times the city is fun, but I realized I would not want to live there. So I would not want to live in New Orleans. It's yeah. just, it's too much going on. The crime rate now is really bad. And the weather, the weather, <laughs> it's not fun. Like, it's just super unpredictable. It, it is definitely unpredictable. So yesterday we went to New Orleans. Um, we went to this restaurant called Luke's. Um, fantastic food, by the way. Like, everything that we had was, yeah, was delicious. And, you know, the the forecast while we've been here has been, like, 70% rain, um, but it's been very, like, unpredictable. It's been very 100% rain <laughs> But, like, but at the same time, it's, like, it'll it'll go for a few minutes, and then it'll stop, and then it'll, like, start up again, and then, you know. Yeah, but yesterday, I think, yeah, it's just kind Yesterday, of... though, it was, like, stormy, like, majority of the time like that we're out. It was, sideways storming. <laughs> yeah, so it was wild. But I thought, I thought it was interesting, because, like, you guys were freaking out, and you're just like, oh, I don't want to get wet. And I'm just like... It's just rain. Let's go. <laughs> it's because it's not. You love the water, though. Mm. We're, I'm not a water person. I just, I hate being, the only time I like water is if I have to drink it or take a shower. Only time I like <laughs> it. But I hate swimming. I'm terrified about being on a boat. Like, I've been on boats before, and I was always thinking, oh my gosh, we can get stranded. The currents will carry us off into the open ocean. We will die. Yeah, but we were, we were like, downtown New Orleans. I know, but <laughs> like, still. Like, but it was, it was actually kind of cool. because If um, I don't have to get wet, I'm not going to want to get wet. It's a, it's a preference. No, I, I get that. I just thought it was funny because you guys are all just like, I don't want to get wet. And it I'm sucked, like, yeah. too, because I was hoping we could do a little bit more after we were done eating. I mean, we technically could have. We, it's not like we could have walked around. We would have gotten wet. We could have. No. Yeah, it would have been fine. No, 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 it would have no, been no, fine. No, no. No, anyway, no, no. it was it was very interesting because apparently like the the like the pipes in New Orleans too are apparently really bad. Yeah, they're so, garbage. Uh, if you guys had me on Snapchat, you guys were able to see essentially like <laughs> one of the manhole covers like had popped out because of like the amount of pressure that was coming out, and it was just like like a geyser just. Yeah. Water just coming out. Yeah, it's like Sophia said. It was um, air trying to escape the pipes, and that's what was causing that geyser. It looks so cool. I was like, what is this? Oh, my gosh. And it gets so flooded so bad, too. Like, under that bridge that we saw yesterday, five feet of water. 
Five feet of water in just a short amount of time, too. Yeah, it was only raining. Well, I mean, we had just gotten there, so it was only raining for about an hour. But I can't imagine how much more rain there was just before we got there. Right, no, but that's what I mean. Is like it, like within, we'll say, what, two hours? Yeah, two, three hours flooded already. It just already. flooded five, like over five feet. And it floods here, too. Like, you saw how um, yesterday morning, how much water was in our yard. Like, not even from the ditch, but just, like, collecting in our yard. Yeah. And I thought that was cool. I was like, all right, this is rad. Now <laughs> I understand why it's so green here. Yeah. That's another thing Plenty for me. It's like, <laughs> I, I, I love like grass, like I love trees and grass and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it's nice to be like absolutely surrounded by green. That's why we should move here. But you don't like it here. I don't. But I mean, <laughs> again, now that I'm older, I've, I've grown on it. You know, I, I, I like quiet places. This I is, like, I feel like this is a you place yeah because i would tell you you know let's move to the mountains and let's move you know let's be isolated yeah (laughs) i want isolation i want to be away from people Well, that's another thing another cool thing here too is like because you know where we live um like the houses like the the way the houses are developed like everything's like right on top of each other like the the space in between houses is super tight but like here yeah yeah so we have fences fences don't exist here (laughs) Yeah, because we don't need them. Which is wild to me. I mean, I mean, I'm sure there are some houses out there that have a fenced-in yard. Oh no, I'm, I'm privacy, sure about that. But, but like, I just mean like the it's way it's not that, like a necessity here. Yeah, where because, like it is back in Tucson. Like there's fences everywhere for like property and everything like that. Yeah, and I would like to think that people here understand where the property line ends because, like you said, back home. <laughs> The houses are, like, smashed up against each other. Yeah. And I, when I was working at the HOA, people would always call in upset. They're like, well, where does my property line end? Or where does their property line end? Because blah, blah, blah. But here it's, like, pretty obvious, I feel like, you know? <laughs> well, it's, we it's also because there's, there's just space. so... Yeah, there's so much space in between every single house. Like, honestly, I feel like there could be another house in between both of these houses. They really could. Like, they could fit, like, one of those, um, just elongated... What, a shotgun, shotgun Yeah, like houses? a shotgun house, yeah. like, in between our houses. If you guys don't know what a shotgun house is, just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just one elongated house, and you just... Yeah, it's it's been it's been super fun. Like, I don't know, I, I think I do really like... Punch, like, Louisiana. I, I think I do, like... I think just I anywhere in. green, really... Yeah, Wait. anywhere that's not Arizona, yeah. <laughs> honestly. So dusty. So, like, last week, it was, like, 112 degrees that's back so home. That's so sickening. <laughs> and, like, right now, it's, what, like, 80-something with humidity? And I'm cool yeah. with, like, I'm totally happy with that. Because it's, like, again, I don't feel like I'm dying. Well, again, humidity. It's just condensation on your face. You're just sweating before you sweat. Which I don't mind. I'm totally, I'm totally, like, it's 81 degrees right now. I'm not going to lie, though. Well, yeah, now, right now, because of the rain, it feels so cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I forgot how cool it feels. It's nice. During the rainy season. (laughs) So how long, how long does it, how, like, the rainy season for? All year. (laughs) See, it's great. Like, it's a win-win. You're just selling, you're selling me on this place more. Yeah, because again, the weather is unpredictable. So the rain is, I feel like the rain was constant, even though they would say, oh, sunny weather. (laughs) Now there would be like a little scattered thunderstorm somewhere. Wow. So cool. I mean, it's just like, you guys can kind of like vaguely see in the window behind me though. Like, yeah, like the condensation. How fogged it is. Yeah. It's so cool. Like, I, I don't know. It's, it's different. You know, yeah. Get just a poor kid living in in the desert, coming to good old Louisiana. Well, we should move here. The houses here are a little more affordable too. When you that's another it. thing. Like, like I'm not houses gonna... out here are way cheaper than Arizona right now. Like the the real the realty still went up though. Like it's still a little bit more than what I've seen it before, mm-hmm. but still not as much as in Tucson. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. So, you know, maybe, maybe, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll talk about it. <laughs> Matt's mom is a realtor. Oh, I'm just let's saying. Do, let's talk to her. <laughs> let's, let's just start selling everybody to start moving out here. Yeah, if you want quiet, quiet, green peacefulness with rain, this is where you want to be. And flooding. <laughs> and honestly, it's not that far from Louisiana because, like, Ponchatoula is what, like, 50 minutes or so? 
Yeah, it's like about an hour less than an hour yeah. to make it to the city. So that's you not know? bad at all, to be honest. Like, yeah. The the drive there was pretty chill. Oh, uh, yesterday we got to drive on the... Causeway. The Causeway. One of the longest bridges over water. Dude, that thing was wild. It was, was just, it? it was just... Well, I mean, like, you know, because you, you've been able to experience it, but it's like... Oh, yeah. I've never been on a bridge where, like, looking both left and right, it's just endless water. Yeah, it's that right was crazy. over Lake Pontchartrain. And when the hurricane happened, um, Hurricane Katrina... Um, people were finding sharks there because, I mean, they just got pushed into the lake. And, I mean, I'm sure there aren't any anymore. And, you know, it's pretty typical, though, where sharks will accidentally swim upstream yeah. into a river, into a lake. I mean, they're essentially like a big trapped. fish. But, fish do that. But, yeah, after the hurricane, there were just, people were finding a lot of them. Damn, that's yeah. crazy. It was, it was interesting. <sighs> See, that's, I mean, the only thing... I guess the only question I have is like, is there good Mexican food here? Tacos and beer is the closest you're going to get here in Hammond. <laughs> no, but they're really good. Like, I think it's close to being authentic. So there's another one called La Carrera. Mm-hmm. Is that the one that's just around the street? It has the weird like yellow bars and stuff. Yellow bars. Yeah. I saw there. I saw a Mexican restaurant as we were coming home yesterday. And they had like some weird yellow bars as their entrance. You know, I can't remember what this one here looks like because the one here in Ponchatoula, they actually opened some a few years ago. So I only remember the one in Hammond. Okay. We've been, I've been to the one in Ponchatoula, but I don't remember what it looks like. We didn't go there enough, but they're also Mexican food, but it's not good. <laughs> like, it's, is, it, is it's, it like that place that we went to at, in Houston? No, it's not as bad as there. It's not as bad so as the one if in you Houston. So if you guys oh are traveling God. through Houston and you guys find yourself in Terminal C? Yeah, no. the C Terminal. Yeah, the C Terminal. Do not go to the Tex-Mex Mex, or Tex-Mex restaurant that is there because, oh my God, you Taco will regret Bell is everything. Better. Dude, like their quesadilla was just sad. Like the mushroom was okay, but like it was just sad. And no, I agree with you. Like Taco Bell is way better than that place. It really is. Like there was just more flavor to it. You yeah, know? there was like, actual flavor to they it. They could have seasoned the mushrooms and spinach in a, in some sort of yeah, fashion. Yeah, honestly, it, it seemed like they just sweated both the spinach and the mushrooms without yeah. seasoning. Yeah, it was it was really disappointing. Their guacamole was okay. Their pico de gallo was the weirdest <sighs> shit I've oh ever my had. God. So tell tell them what you said it tasted like. It tastes the way Fabuloso or Pine Sol smells. <laughs> yeah. It had like a chemical flavor. I don't know what kind of lime juice they were using, but it was awful. It was disgusting. It was one of the worst what kind of lime? I've ever had. Yeah, like I don't uh <laughs> that was that was rough. Uh, so yeah, it was... it's 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 been fun, you know, because yeah, I, I talked about it on the podcast a few weeks ago when I went to or I guess last week. Uh, when I went up to DC, like it's it's nice going through an airport again. Like mm-hmm. there's there's this like un un I don't want to say untold, but like unspeakable. What's the word I want? <laughs> like like an enchantment to it or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like th- there's a there's a um. Oh my god, what's I can't think of the word right now. It's there's a certain charm to like traveling on an airplane like like there's like it's a whole like lifestyle right like yeah like going through security like packing a bag getting really crappy food yeah. anywhere you go i can't imagine you know traveling for a living and always having to go through an airport i mean the anxiety i feel already just like every once in a while well that's why a lot of those people have like have like the platinum membership or whatever right because like they fly they so have often the fancy lounges off yeah to the side. it's because they live there like yeah. <laughs> Like it's not it's not a great life. They should just build in a hotel at this point in the airports. I'm surprised that they don't. I'm surprised that they don't have like like a sleeping area. Yeah. But then I can see how, you know, the hygiene of it all. Maybe it's too much upkeep having to like replace the sheets and everything since that's not their service. Yeah, you know, but they replace the sheets on out. first class all the time anyway. Huh? Cuz like first class gets like a pillow and a blanket. Oh, do they? Yeah. Oh, well, that's the extent they're willing to go. Because <laughs> <laughs> they're paying that extra extra cash. But yeah, uh, tacos and beer. Only good one around here. <laughs> well, we're definitely going to check it out. I will say, though, food. Food-wise, here in Hammond. Okay. Best places to go. 
Um, so sushi. The sushi here, the best place to go is Kate Street. They're not amazing, but they're pretty good. Is it better than what we have at home? That would have to be up to you. I feel like it's very like it's not it's not traditional sushi. You know, they they what do that mean? like they have the Cajun roll. They have this fried crawfish roll. Oh, so it's, it's so it's, it's like, like it's, it's like very, back home where like they have like the the Mexican roll or the jalapeno roll where it's ew, like what? what do you mean ew that's a thing that's Mexican in Tucson. I'm not it? saying it's great, but I'm just saying like it's the equivalent of like it's it seems like it's a like uh, regional. Yeah, type like of, they make their own version, and it's owned by um, the Wongs. Um, yeah, right, Sophia. Kate Street's owned by one of the Wong brothers. Yes. Yeah. Because the Wongs are a prominent family here in Hammond. They own almost every restaurant. Fucking <laughs> so, represent, yo. <laughs> <laughs> um, they even had a nightclub at one point, which kind of sucked because it was um, the nightclubs here, I think like twangy country nightclubs. Okay? Oh, boy. That's all it was. But the Wongs opened one up where it felt more like you were in New Orleans. Oh, that's cool. So like like a modern Yeah, but it nightclub. ended up closing. They only had it open for like a couple of years and then they closed it. It wasn't just generating enough. Yeah, I so said that sucks because it's like, I feel, I feel like a small town like this, right? Like there are, there's definitely room for opportunities here because there's mm-hmm. so much space and stuff like that, but it's really going to depend on like the locals. It does. And that's why Mark's store, I mean, great store, but it didn't do well because of the type of style there is here yeah, like like it's just it's, it's a different so, clientele and you wanna that's really sit, what's going to be the market you, you want to say hi to the camera <laughs> yeah, it's up to you, you. so the camera's over Hello. here so oh you need to squeeze here. in oof oof, oof. I wonder if there's Oh yeah, I'm like there's another chair right there. Yeah, we have <laughs> other chairs. <laughs> there you go. Come a little closer. It's okay, I'm still in mine too. There you go. So, so this, this is Sophia. Oh, I'm uh, sorry. Do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> AKA Gay Fia. AKA her sister. Yeah. Yo, uh, Batch number one. You guys, yeah. So you guys have a whole thing called the batches. Do you guys want to explain what the hell that's about? I know I've never asked you about I that mean, whole thing. I think instead of bitches, we just went with batches. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's it's the only just a little inside joke. Instead I like I like how simple that is because it's not as harsh. Yeah, Ma- so just Mama gets upset. Well, she used to get upset. I think now she knows it's a joke. But when she first heard it, she was like, "What are you saying?" <laughs> did she, did, she, did your mom feel like it was the same thing? Like it was just as vulgar, or yeah, I think she caught on yeah, that it was supposed to be oh, okay. <laughs> But that makes a lot more sense now that like when you say it, she'll be like, Nia. <laughs> yeah, because when we when she would do the FaceTime with us and we would say it, you know, mama's reaction. Yeah, but we only meant it as a joke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Sophia, what do, you, what do you do for work? So I live and work in New Orleans. I work in the central business district for a barge company and I help out um, with contract administration. Yeah, it was office job. Exciting. <laughs> it's just so weird because, like, when you told me barge company, I'm like, ew, like a boat. Like, what? <laughs> I'm, I'm not on. I'm on. I'm not on the barges. I work in the headquarters for that barge company. Yeah, but what is it so. specifically you do? Because I'm still like kind of confused about it. So it's like an administration thing, right? So well, it was a new co- position created for me. Um, well, oh. they they just needed somebody to help out with the contract administrator. But I help out with billing, certain bills, so I kind of work with accounting a little bit, and then I work with contract, the contract administrator. Oh, oh cool. So, so you're just like, like the middle person to like... The a little, yeah. a little, yeah. That's pretty cool. So, oh, okay. It's a good lear- learning experience for sure. I learned a lot. I started at this company not knowing anything about barges except for that they carry stuff on the... <laughs> <laughs> along the Mississippi River and other rivers that we use in the country. So it's pretty, pretty interesting cool. many, to learn like, a lot more about it. How many barges do you guys have to manage? Like, do you guys, like, does the company we, have, like, do they own their own or is it yeah. like, they, okay, so. They own their own and we have hundreds. Damn. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I yeah. don't know anything about boats. I, I, I think <laughs> they said about 
uh, 300 barges. Dang. Oh, wow. If if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and they own a lot of their own boats, too. That's, I mean, it's smart. Yeah. So that's, um, that's crazy. How long have they been around? It's been, uh, I think they started in the 1920s. Oh. Is when cool. they started. How far do they go years? delivering things? We go up the Mississippi River on the, and on the Illinois River, Ohio River, and we use um, this waterway canal that goes from uh, like Pascagoula all the way down to Corpus Christi. It's called the Intercoastal Waterway. Oh, cool. Oh. We use that waterway um, to all ship the stuff. mapping yeah. it out for us. <laughs> I'm like, I, oh, yeah. I know, I yeah, know. Yeah, one city out of that entire sentence is Corpus Christi. <laughs> <laughs> But that's um, really cool. Uh, how yeah. long have you been doing that for? Two years. Dang. Next month makes two years. Ooh. Oh, congrats. Are they going to throw nice. you a little party? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had a no, little... Not until like, 10 years. <laughs> I, I mean, they just acknowledge your anniversary. Maybe give you like a tiny little gift. But, like a $10 aw. gift card to... <laughs> they give her a piece of that. candy. piece of Starburst. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for staying with us. <laughs> It That's could really be cool. whatever your manager gifts you for your <laughs> little work anniversary. So yeah, so, so I've been living in for that. Um, two years. So in you've New been Orleans. living. So you've been living in New Orleans for the last two years, or yes, nice. How do you like it? Yeah. I am a city person, so I do love it. It is the only things I do miss about living between Ponchatoula and New Orleans is that there's no traffic in Ponchatoula. So there's a lot of traffic. The weather is can be a little drastic sometimes it's unexpected and um just the culture well what i really like about new orleans is the culture the vibe Mm -hmm. it's it's known for their parties it's known for their food yeah i say it looks like there's a lot to do in new orleans there's a lot of history good and bad yeah but kind of sort of made new orleans what it is today so yeah that's awesome yeah it's a nice place to be i really do like it because i mean something to do everywhere you know everywhere you turn it's it's well known like you can it's well known for you know you can have a to-go drink and walk around drink publicly through the french oh yeah because you what yeah you can carry out a lot of I uh, saw. So I was shocked when I visited Beats. other states, and I went to bars. They're like, "No, you can't take that out." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it was only New Orleans. Yeah, I, but because I know, I know Vegas also has an open container rule where if you're on the strip, you can drink alcohol. Oh, okay. But only on the strip in Vegas. Okay. Everywhere else, you're not allowed to. Who knows? Especially during Mardi Gras, Ooh. people are openly drinking everywhere. I mean they let that slide it's they usually i think they usually just keep it in the french quarter where you can yeah carry your you can bring your own drinks or carry it out of the restaurant or bar and you're allowed to drink wherever but well um, what i find fascinating they let it go throughout the whole city is so. that there are daiquiri drive throughs and you can buy your daiquiris and pick what? them up at the drive-thru, and they... It's like an honor system, almost, you know? <laughs> yeah, they have They expect you not to drink while driving. <laughs> I mean, they have it in other cities here. It's not just New Orleans. Yeah, only. no, not That's just crazy. New Orleans. Like, I've seen it here in yeah, Hammond. Because yeah. I went one time with Mark, and we got daiquiris. I mean, we didn't drink and drive, because we were like, well, we don't want to get in yeah, trouble. Yeah, I was but... like, wait, no open containers in the car, but clearly, I mean, yeah. okay. <laughs> I'm like, wow, they are trusting. That's wild. I can't even... <laughs> That is a it lot is of faith. A <laughs> yeah. Drinking state, yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Because I mean, like we have drive-through, uh, like liquor stores, but like that makes sense. Cause yeah, it's, like, I you're mean, you a closed container, but like a daiquiri, it's like you styrofoam they made it cup. They hand it to you, like enjoy. That's crazy. With a straw ready in yeah. there, you know. <laughs> wow, I'm gonna have to hit that up too. There's a lot of stuff that I want to do while we're in uh, New Orleans. Um, I just wish there was so much more time because I did want you to see Hammond. Like, I mean, it's uh, it's not I exciting, mean, we still have a but few more days. Yeah, we can go tonight. Yeah, oh yeah, that's true. Because we, we can time. still go to the or, Red, White, and Brew. But, yeah, I thought we were gonna do that last night. I was tired, <laughs> sleepy, in sleep. 
You did last night. Yeah, I slept a little bit more last night. It was kind of rough, though. I kept tossing and turning. I woke up at 5 o'clock today. Again. Not happy with it. But you went to bed (laughs) at like 12. I know, which is 10 o'clock our time. (sighs) It's still early. (laughs) I don't... Time differences don't mess with me when it comes to my sleep. <laughs> it does for me because I I know that we're two hours ahead. Well, stop thinking about how we're two hours ahead. I can't. Because like to me, once it's dark and I'm feeling tired, I go to bed. I want that superpower. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. But I need like something to knock me out too. Because the melatonin doesn't work anymore. Like, it will every once in a while if I don't take it consecutively, but I do sometimes need it consecutively. Like, I can't sleep. Yeah, I, melatonin doesn't do anything for me. Yeah. I try, but nothing. But you guys are morning use any sleep aids. <laughs> yeah, Sophia actually made me laugh this morning. She was telling me on how um, she has a dating app, and on it, she was like, we'll get along great if you're a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that's awesome. That. That's a good thing to put in your bio, though. <laughs> if you if you had a dating profile, what would you what would like what, one of the biggest things be on your bio? Oh, I don't know. I guess you know they'd have to be um, spontaneous, mm-hmm. like just up and ready to go somewhere, fun to do something fun, but give me enough time to get ready. And then, <laughs> like um, we did this morning. <clears throat> Morning person, too. Like, I don't think you sleep in that late. You still at least get up before 11 or 10 sometimes, which I appreciate. Because, I mean, I've been with people before who wouldn't get up until, like, the afternoon. And I'd be like, you just wasted (laughs) half our day. (laughs) I mean, when I was living alone, I totally woke up at, like, 1, 2. But that was also because I went to bed at, like, like, 6 a.m. And you had, like, three different jobs. Yeah, sure. (laughs) <laughs> I was so I was insanely busy tiring. at that point. Yeah, just, when I needed to sleep, I needed to sleep. But yeah, just someone who likes to go on adventures, doesn't sleep in too late, likes food. I don't know, I guess that's it. Sounds, so, no, I mean, that's sounds cool. pretty simple. Yeah, I mean, pretty straightforward. You no, know, don't be a crazy person. <laughs> just, that's it. <laughs> what about you? Uh, Well, my... Well, Mine currently <laughs> has the, like, description of, like, I'm with someone, blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah, that whole thing. And then it's, like, I tell them my interests and just be, like, I'm a dungeon master. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm, a bi- yeah. I'm a big geek. Like, I love comic books and, and stuff like that. Um, so, like, I get a lot of people who are just, like, you're a dungeon master? Can you be a dungeon master for me? I'm, like, fuck you guys. Like, I'm, I'm thinking about deleting that because, well, like, those, those are, like, half the messages. Uh, well, because I feel like. It. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can you please do it and send me pictures? Yeah, no, yeah I'll do it. <laughs> I'll screenshot it all. Wait, did I tell you how our relationship works? I don't know if I ever told you. Not sure. Oh. Yeah, no, we have an open relationship, so he's free to to go on dates and stuff with people. Oh, I think Mark maybe told me <laughs> that oh, now yeah. that I think about it. And okay. you've already went on like one or two. I've done two. Yeah. I've, I've gone on two. I have no interest in anybody, though. Everybody sucks out there. No offense, Tucson. <laughs> yeah, it, if it makes you feel any better, those, those two are not great. Because, <laughs> like, I've had, like, people take an interest at me, in me when I was working at Dillard, you know, before I got fat. And, well, you're not even fat. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, like that Mexican dude? Yeah, so, like, what was that his drink name? Oh, no, no, no. It was this... Oh, did I tell you about this guy who bought me a smoothie who was just shopping around? And he would yeah. not tell me who the hell he was buying the dress for? <laughs> I kept... I literally kept asking him, like, so is this dress for your sister, your mom, your wife, girlfriend? And he just completely ignored it and just changed the topic. And I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, which is weird because, like, because your whole reason for asking was that way, like, you can kind of get, yeah, get a better idea of... Who it's for that we... You can yeah, because they want us to create a relationship with our customers. and Because the dress was expensive. It was an Antonio Milani dress. And it was like $200. Mm. And, you know, I'm asking. I'm like, oh, you know, is this for, for your girlfriend? Like a birthday surprise or something? And he was like... He just ignored it. And then later on, he came back with a smoothie and left me his number. And I'm like, what the hell? It was just so bizarre. Maybe the dress was for you. I bet you he returned it. Because I went to go look at my returns one day, and I thought I saw like a $200 return. And I'm like, it was him. (laughs) (laughs) 
No, I mean, like, you've had a couple of guys who have been interested. But, yeah, you, I, I mean, just, I even encourage you. I'm just like, well, why just, not? I don't know. Like, I think, <laughs> I think I'm done dating. I think I'm just over it. It's just... Because... You know, I mean, I've had I'm like a lot. I've already. had a lot of boyfriends, and like you've dated a lot of people lately. No, well, not a lot, but <laughs> <laughs> just just a, a few. small handful. And like, it's just enough. Like, Went you just want to kind of stop. You know, I mean, who knows? Maybe one day in the future, if there's somebody else who really piques my interest. Yeah. But I mean, that's hard to do <laughs> with me now. Before, I used to just date anybody just because they were attractive and I gave them a chance and then they ended up being losers and I was like bye <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever dated that's not true I, was gonna say, I don't think I've ever dated someone just for their looks but no I haven't that's not true no it's <laughs> I, yeah no I've definitely done that regrettable <laughs> but I think it's also part of just growing up it's like you know like thankfully you know what you want now so it's like you're not gonna play games yeah like yeah, yeah you have certain expectations because, so. I mean, like, and at our, our age now, it's like, we don't want to play around. <laughs> no more games. Yeah, but yeah. I also feel like, I don't know, dating now is so weird. Just in general, like... I think it is now because it seems like now people are just doing it casually. They're not really interested in settling down because everyone... Likes to travel. They don't want to feel tied down or some nonsense like that. Yeah, but I don't, I don't think Which that's inherently fine. a bad thing. Like, yeah, I just, no. I just think as long as you set the expectations forward, then you know that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Like if you're if you're online and you're like in like in your bio, you're like just here for casual things, blah 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 blah. Then you know what you're getting into. Or if you're being serious about it, you know, just be like looking for serious inquiries only. <laughs> Yeah, and I feel like dating apps nowadays, they're not really for that anymore. Like Tinder, Grindr. Well, not Grindr. Grindr for sure not. No, that one's a literal apps, hookup site. Well, there are some apps that are for more serious, well, the free ones that are for more serious dating. Uh, which ones? Like, like Hinge, Hinge. Um, and Bumble. Yeah, are those is, new? I like Hinge, the I layout like, of Hinge. It looks I, nice. I it's do sleek. too. I like the layout, and it seems more. If you're, it, it seems like for more serious oh. daters. Yeah. I mean, some people will straight up say, "Oh, I'm only in town for the weekend." You know, do you want to hang out? There's some people like that, and whatever. But yeah, I also feel like I don't know. It's the app made to be deleted. <laughs> I, I know, <laughs> that's I, how they that's, advertise. Yeah, it. that's their advertisement. Oh, that's how they advertise it. Uh, <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> but like, I, I even feel like even social media is like drastically different because i remember like the myspace days where people would just add people left and right and like Mm -hmm. make connections that way and now it's like no one no one wants to talk to each other online i think because now Mm -hmm. it's just kind of dangerous like now that it's out and open and everyone talks about it like how oh they went to go meet up with this guy they met online and then this happened oh like the horror stories yeah like it gets scary (laughs) The same thing can happen with the dating apps too. I know. That's why like, I'm like, I'm like. Cautious. That's why whenever like I, I, I'm always cautious. If I match with someone, I'm always like, hey, what's your Snapchat or like, what's your Instagram? Because, like, you want to snoop on their life before you get into it. I want to make sure that they're real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's my thing. Like, I look for them on social media, kind of, kind of try to see who they are as a person mm-hmm. by looking at the pictures. Yeah, yeah kind of life. At least you can get a better live. gauge of the person because, like, yeah, on like dating apps, you only get like six pictures to really like gauge. And yeah. typically, those mm-hmm. are the ones where they're like they're trying mm-hmm. to look their best. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, I want more candid shit. Like, what kind of person are you really? Yeah, because <laughs> you get tagged in a lot on Facebook. Yeah, so and I, I don't think it's a bad thing to just like, because I, I feel like you're protecting yourself more than anything. Like. Especially in the digital age, like anyone can kind of catfish you and pretend to be something else. So yeah, it's just I don't know. So for younger it viewers out there, make sure you're being safe out there, especially on TikTok. Yeah, don't be dumb. Yeah, use your brain. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just I've seen because uh, all the like, crime videos we've been watching. I'm like, why? Especially parents. Like, why aren't they? Why aren't they asking their kid? Who is yeah. this that you're talking to? Like, Dude, my mom, when I was a teenager, knew all of my friends and their parents. 
Because she actively, like, was looking for them and making sure that we all, like, she knew who I was mingling with. Yeah, my mom would always ask us about the parents. She'd be like, well, who are they? What are their names? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like, well, even, like, my friends growing up, a lot of them yeah. didn't care. Like, their parents did not care. They were just like, yeah, yeah whatever. there are a lot of parents that just don't give a, give a flying cha. Yeah, they don't. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it is what it is. If you're going to be a parent, at least be a good one. <laughs> I never want to be a parent. Do you? Scary. Oh, I don't know. I yeah. don't know yet. That's where I it's am. It's not a responsibility, man. I mean, have you ever thought, I do want a kid one day? I thought I wouldn't, like, be 100% against the idea. Oh. I'm like I'm, I'm in the middle. Percent That's, against it. I'm not sure if I do. I'm not sure if I don't. So my thing is like I would like a kid just to like keep my lineage going, but like I don't want the responsibility. Like that's like we can adopt one that's already like a teen. No, I want like to keep my lineage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean your dad was adopted and and their lineage kept going through him. You know, it's not blood, but I mean, still. Yeah, but you know, I want my blood to keep flowing. Um, <laughs> okay, we'll who, get a who surrogate. Who was it the other day? <laughs> someone, someone told me that I have a blue blood name, and I can't remember who, who said it to me. Um, Do you remember? I, I think I told you. It was some... Oh, it was the coach. The coach? Um, The gymnastics coach. Oh, yeah. So, uh, last week, I got the privilege to meet uh, Yoichi Tokima. Uh, who is the Olympic assistant coach for the gymnastics team for the USA. And uh, when I introduced myself, uh, he was like, oh, that's a blue blood name. And I was very confused because I didn't know what You're that like, meant. What the hell does that mean? So uh, and then I, looked it up. I Googled it and it's like uh, a prestigious, like, uh, White name. royal, <laughs> well, like royalty type Sorry. of thing. The like, last name? No, 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 my, no my name in general. Because oh. I, I, I introduced myself and he was like, it's, it's a blue blood It's Irish name. descent, the name. Yeah, oh, Balfour, okay. Balfour is the name of the first Irish king. Yeah. I oh. thought that was pretty yeah. cool. Interesting. So I was like, sick. Um, but yeah, I got to keep my blue blood <laughs> going, you know? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, we'll get a surrogate though. Thanks for featuring me that on works. your podcast. Yeah. Sophia's like, I want to go. <laughs> yeah. Get on out of here. So thank you, Sophia, for, <laughs> for joining. <laughs> um, where are we at? We still have about... 15 more minutes um now i can actually tilt this back right over here and i think the camera is out of focus is it <laughs> yeah I, but it's okay i my eyes are out of focus <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah as you can see we're, we're we're continuing the the new setup with the new camera um and i personally like it i know the unfortunately the lighting's a little weird here so uh it's gonna be oh, a little off well, i can see it trying to focus on me no then... yeah i think it's just because Mm. Yeah, it's a little weird, but it's good. Um, but uh, some exciting gaming news uh, that I found out earlier today is there is a new Dungeons & Dragons video game called Dark Alliance. Um, once I get back to Arizona, uh, we're looking at for me and Buddy to live stream it uh, the following Friday. So, I Dark guess... Dark Alliance? What is that? Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. It's a, it's a four-player co-op um slasher so it's essentially like you get to play as an elf rogue or an oh elf. the the dungeons and dragons game yeah. oh derp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so uh so me and buddy are going to try to look into it um see if we can do a live stream on it next friday um this thursday buddy is going to be playing i think portal with bewitched again if you guys have been checking them out and then on friday he's going to be streaming another game i'm not entirely sure what uh, but I gotta, I gotta message him and ask. Um, Thanks, buddy. Yeah, man. Thank, I appreciate you doing the work while we're away. Yeah. Um, other than that, I don't what think there's any over there? announcements. Did you hear her skip? But, yeah, I, I heard her all night last night. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, She's a wanderer. They have, they have two dogs here, and they're like the smallest things in the world. One is called Chickpea, and the other one is um, Chewy. Chewy, and they're freaking adorable. What, what kind of dog is Chewy? Chewie is a Yorkie, and you know, people, when we first got him and we finally named him, they were like, oh, like Chewbacca. We're like, no, because he kept chewing on the baseboards. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually really funny. 
Because at first I did think his name was based off Chewbacca. But... We were not bright kids. No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. But we just couldn't think of a name. And because he kept chewing on everything, we were like, what about Chewy? It's okay. Uh, when I was living with Dennis and Candace, we had a, a basset hound. And when we when they brought her back, because she had very stumpy feet, we just mm. called her Stumps. Oh. Yeah. She's dead now. But Oh, God. Yeah. yeah they had to put is. her down. That's so sad. I know. I was very sad because... She wasn't eating anymore, huh? Yeah, no. I mean, she just got old. Yeah. I mean, because uh, I was, I think I was like 13 when they got her. So she oh. was like 15 years old when she died. Oh. Because before that one, they had kiwi, which was a which was a bagel, a bagel, a beagle. <laughs> it was a bagel. <laughs> it was a bagel. <laughs> a bagel with legs <laughs> and barked. Yeah. Uh, man, a beagle sounds good. And before before chickpea, we had Bambina. Her name was Bambina. She was an absolute angel. Like you could not find a more loyal, sweet dog. Oh. She was so creepy too because she was so attached to Mama. Like she couldn't live like without her. Like her shadow type of thing. Yeah, like she like like Soot is to me. <laughs> you know, but quieter. <laughs> so it's funny though, because like Soot will like literally look at your legs to see when you move. I know. <laughs> and I, I noticed that the other day when I was getting ready, I was looking down and he was just staring at my feet. <laughs> yeah. He was like, wagging his tail very slowly, waiting. Yep, he was just waiting for you to move. Yeah. What a loyal adorable. dog. I know. Our dogs are so good. We if, don't deserve animals. Yeah, if you guys if pets. you guys have never had a dog around the house i recommend getting one if you're if you are able to care for one i recommend getting and if you're it. patient in training them and don't hit them yeah you should yeah yeah i mean you could give them a little pat on the butt but i mean i throw kate I've, off the bed but i don't I've like i've seen people where they like would like them. slap them in the face and i'm just like don't i do booped that. the nose but i never like bah! yeah like there's a difference between like an actual like you know like a <laughs> a whack and then just kind of like boop. yeah because like, i mean i do that but i don't i don't think i've ever hit a dog i've never i mean i've spanked a dog because you know they were doing something bad <laughs> like no <laughs> they no, like, but never I mean, like beat them something that drives me nuts is like you know i i'm i'm not a huge like animal person but i do like and anim- like i do like them you know what i mean yeah that's why i was like pressuring you to get kate <laughs> i was like i know he'll love him well like i didn't know that that was the dog that we were gonna get you know well you had told me you wanted something black and i know originally you wanted a husky but they're too they're way too much high maintenance. They're, they're super high maintenance and you have to take care of i i am actually really pissed off because i know someone from my past who bugged their significant other to get them a freaking husky mm-hmm. and they they never took care of it the way that they should have been taking care of it like it was super well, malnourished it was oh. always outside which is like it's fine for them to be outside and run but yeah. in the tucson heat yeah that's not for a husky to be. no and i i find it interesting that um isn't there like a like a whole thing about that in Tucson mm-hmm. about having huskies? Yep. Like you're supposed to actually treat them and raise them as a husky, not as an outside dog. Yep. Yeah, and that's that's the thing that kind of it irritates me when I see people huskies in town. Huskies need the cold. They need ice mm-hmm. baths. Yeah. They love ice baths. It's like one of their favorite things to do. And you know what's funny? I'll see like um, these videos on Facebook of people who had huskies during the snowstorm and the huskies didn't want to come inside. Mm -hmm. And there were people shouting abuse to the owner saying, that's animal abuse. They're literally bred to do that. They love the cold. They love the snow. And the owners would post a video and they're like, watch, watch when I tried to call them in. The dogs just stare at them and continue playing in the snow. Like, like, they don't. <laughs> and I, people, people just need to do some research before they start shouting their opinion. Cause like, yeah, I mean, like, well, and that's the thing is like every breed needs different things. And yeah. I, th- I think that's the thing that people don't understand is like when they, when they think dog, it's like, oh, okay, I got to treat a dog just like every other dog. But it's like, no, depending on the breed, they require different things. Yeah. And it's just like the Shebas when we met your friends. <sighs> yeah. Because, Zach like and he was Malika. saying, they're independent dogs. Shout out to them. They they don't need like they some look like dogs. Little foxes. Yeah, some dogs just don't need our twenty four hour attention. They like being independent. Yeah, let's get a Sheba next. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm fine with that. They, yeah, because you know they look like fox, like you said. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But yeah. But yeah, I mean, yeah. If you're going to get a dog, just be responsible. But uh, we're coming up on the time right now. So uh, thank you, B, for mm-hmm. being my guest today. Thank you mm-hmm. for letting us shoot so in your long. home. You're welcome. Um, make sure to uh, to check out bloodhaven.com for more of our content. Uh, be sure to subscribe to us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And we'll be back next week, back in Tucson, um, mm-hmm. for another podcast. So we'll see you guys later.